Wow. Yeah, I really like that one, man. That the baseline thing that the you know, the descending little bass line thing that you have going and that it's in this different time signature really turned out great. I wish my piano were a little more in tune. Um, <laughs> no, no. But, but man, you made it sound, you made it sound beautiful though. And so... Appreciate it. It's a, it's a beautiful melody that, that Charles wrote. And so I was just trying to think of a another kind of setting to put it in. And yeah, but it's really all based on that melody. It's kind of the cool part about it. And man, I mean, being able to lay down those little uh, group versions with you from the get-go, we were just calling, I was sitting behind the drums, you know, with my laptop, modern advances, you know, all plugged in, and uh, mm -hmm. just calling out different vibes. So I think we did all of the ones that we did, or that we recorded, you know, and they turned out really great. And then being able to just get a couple little overdubs here and there, it was a lot of fun to be able to do, man. Just one of the many ways in which you've gone above and beyond to help me make this thing happen, which I can't oh, thank man. you for, for real. Man, my pleasure. It takes a lot. Chris and I spent a lot of miles in the car together. You know, we sort of, the whole thing was, uh, <laughs> you know, we rehearsed the music or gigged the music for maybe like, I guess the year leading up to the recording. It was really right after I got back from New York. That I yeah, maybe, yeah, at least a year, probably over a year. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of miles in the car. He came with me. So we were both in the D.C. area for a while. And then uh, Chris would drive down with me to Charlottesville, to Richmond, and up to New York City, mm -hmm. looking for parking in the Upper West, west Side at 5 in the morning. <laughs> so, yeah, driving to Times Square at, like, noon, <laughs> straight into Times oh, yeah, Square. <laughs> Yeah, that was wild. That was crazy. It takes a lot, and I, just, I appreciate it so much, so much, because jazz is Man. a very individually driven, you know, genre, because everybody is so curious and has such an identity, or it wants to establish such an identity. It's definitely not a fault. It's like sort of a just a result of everyone being awesome, in that their priorities are often, you know, their own projects, where they're so worked with being a sideman, you know, that it's tough for them to commit. So it's just awesome to be able to have someone who is really able to be the foundation and the fundamental in the rhythm, rhythm section to make it happen. And man, what an opportunity to get to play with Alan Johnson in the rhythm section on the record. I mm -hmm. mean, just such an amazing swinging cat, master pianist, unbelievable. Yeah, we had a, we had a blast playing with him um, in, in the live, live shows and in the studio and the, uh, energy and chemistry that we were able to create together yeah really a joy it's just beautiful how the parts came together you know and, the, and being able to introduce you and a lot and now y'all get to be homies up in new york see i'm jealous you know i'm the only one in dc now or i guess out in virginia <laughs> northern virginia um it's a dangerous right. thing to me but yeah it's always it was really incredible for the album release shows to be able to get the two of y'all you and a lot to come down and john and charles to come up um, to play the shows man and really put on a performance for the people I think that the folks that were there really enjoyed it, and uh, we hope that you're checking it out, too, uh, at home, and we'll tell somebody about it, sing with us. And, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a favorite track on the record that you could tell people about, or like a favorite moment? From volume one? That was released. Oh, the people, man, the people don't even know. Well, here, here they go. I mean, we're gonna, we do have volume two coming. I'm glad you said that, Chris, because yeah, we've only, we've only released <laughs> half the vault. We got volume two coming That's in right. January, so stay tuned. So yeah, from volume one, let's say. Yeah, um, hard to say. I mean, I, I love the energy on "Love" as a song. Anyone can sing. It's the, it's the, it's the title track of the record, and it, it opens up the album with a just great energy, and this, and then it introduces the, that scene that's going to be brought back throughout the entire album and these little snippets and interludes. Yeah, that, that's a blast. I also, it's hard to say. I mean, it's, it's kind of biased to ask, you know, to ask me because I'm part of it, but um, Hip City Blues, you know, swinging, having a blast playing that. Um, yeah. Life in a Glass House, an incredible energy and climax that, that, oh, that song goes to, yeah. um, with especially with um, what Charles was able to do with with that melody, and then the incredible playing of Antonio Hart and Alan, and yeah, that was that was an incredible experience. Yeah, there's so much, so much there. It's a pretty exciting volume one to listen to, in my humble opinion. <laughs> Right, yeah, I mean, you know, that moment on Glass House, man, that thing gets me every time. That's kind of the moment where when I listen to it and I still sort of get the goosebumps, I'm like, okay, I think I just need to keep pushing <laughs> and trying to do this music thing, because damn, I mean, it's yeah. it everything I wanted to have. I mean, it's just so uh, washes over you, man. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a really, it's a moment. It's so really nice. Righteous. And so we're going to, actually, what, I'm trying to think of the clip that we're going to include of you from the record. Because, uh, you know, this is the thing is that, you know, Chris is so killing. And yet, you know, for the record, I only gave him one solo. And it's not because he can't solo. It's just because, you know, I didn't want people to start talking. No, I'm just playing. Um, and, uh, 
but men, it was on it was on a tribute to someone, which I think. And men, I love that that one really benefited from you and me and John having played a lot together, you know, and just like yeah. really trusting each other and, and feeling very comfortable. And and the way that you were able to then take Alan's solo idea, you know, the way that he ends his solo after John, and you pick it right up. Mm. I mean, that was really special. And that's just that's what is with this band that I want. You know, I just don't think that that jazz has to be, you know, chorus after chorus of solo and this and that, or that all the songs have to be like 15 minutes long. You know, I just want, I wanted people to listen to it. (laughs) But in a way, Mm -hmm. it's it's so musical, you know, and again, I think that people, you know, hear when people are listening to each other in the band. And that was just one of my favorite moments in the way that you just, you know, picked this thing right up and just went down the rabbit hole with it, you know, (laughs) and it just kind of so yeah, well, I just, yeah, it was Alan. Alan played an incredible solo and just had this beautiful descending line, and just like, wow, this is. Let me let me try that, you know. And so we're gonna start that for y'all. That's what you're gonna have uh, as sort of your exit music. Chris is gonna play you out, and I just wanted to again thank Chris for talking to me today and his busy New York life, taking a slice. No of man, my pleasure. In the practice room to talk my to pleasure. us, and uh, I guess I'll be seeing you. This is going to be releasing on November 30th, okay? So right after Thanksgiving. So we will have had another little surprise uh, for listeners before then, but I won't say. Um, oh, I guess mm-hmm. it will, it'll be out. So it, it'll be out. So it doesn't matter. So that's silly of me. So Colors of the Wind. Um, and so I hope people will have yeah. will check that out. That'll be the, that's the single that released on November 16th. What an amazing opportunity to get to record that uh, in New York, you know, on that bass microphone, bro, that old ribbon. Yeah. You know, well, I think it was like RC44 and something like that. I'm yeah, that something name. like that. That was an incredible Your studio, bass, uh, an incredible setup. They, uh, yeah, I mean, I've never then, heard. And then, um, yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, I, I've just like never heard a bass tone that was that like warm and clean and, and rich and especially even in like having it in the live room you know the way that it was able to reject my drums being like right next to you too as me as an engineer geek i was i was totally impressed with just that yeah that was in the way that that was something i guess you don't you can't you don't know it having people don't know from not you know watching the recording process but that room that we recorded that in it was not a big room and we we're all in one room with um mark okay. meadows with the pianist and he played some incredible piano and um he was right there in the room with us along with drums and bass and it, it really doesn't you know there's no bleed it's it's it has a amazing ensemble sound yeah yeah very very amazing studio and also the song also features the incredible christy to yeah and, uh, that was an amazing uh thing to be able to play with her and to hear her and hear what she was able to do with this song really brought it to life so big yeah, thank you to sure. christy yeah. and mark for their for their hard work and amazing artistry and these, these selections for sure and braxton too braxton cook playing flute that's right. More known as for his alto saxophoning, and I guess as a vocalist, he's a talented young man. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. he brought out flute for this one, uh, which was cool. So we hope you'll check that out because yeah, Christy just—I mean, she's amazing. <laughs> she's just so simply amazing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we hope you're enjoying it. We hope everybody had a great, you know, Thanksgiving and all that, and sort of have a safe, you know, travels and, and whatnot. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. Are you gonna you gonna come back to the DC area for the holidays? Am I gonna see you? Yep, I'll be back around Thanksgiving time. Awesome. Gonna have to try to do some recording over here at the shack. Yeah, man. All right, Chris. Well, thanks for standing at the front of the line this uh, evening, afternoon, morning. Not sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's morning now, <laughs> so thanks for standing. I'm sitting though, and. Uh, <laughs> Tune in next week for our next episode is actually going to be with my friend Micah Robinson, who introduced uh, sort of the song on the album and uh, another great friend of ours. So thanks very much and tune in next time. Take care.
two, three, four, five. You get the idea. 55 more seconds of me talking to you when you could be speaking to potential new customers. For only $5, you can permanently add your ad to this or one of our many other podcasts. That's every download, every stream, every live listen, everywhere in the world. All you need to do is visit us online at tomajinent.com. That's T-O-M-A-S-I-A-N-E-N-T dot com. And click on the services link at the top of the page. Check out our advertising opportunities and our other services as well, all starting at only $5. 51, 52, 53, 54. But you get the idea. Now get your message out there. Jack Kilby and the Frontline's debut release, Love is a Song Anyone Can Sing, Volume 1, is available now at all your favorite online music retailers, as well as streaming services. 